Hello YouTube viewers, hope you're all doing good. I'm Venkat and this is Just Me an Open Source Channel. Right, so um, I'm planning to start a new series on MongoDB, uh, which is a NoSQL. Um, so I've given it a title, Monday Mongo. And uh, so I'm planning to release a video um, once every week on Monday. So those of you who are following my channel, you already know that I'm doing a Kubernetes series and I'm releasing it, uh, releasing a video on Monday every week uh, around 7.30 a.m. Um, GMT. So um, this is again going to be another series uh, around topics around MongoDB. So I'm planning to do this uh, once every week on Mondays, uh, but I haven't uh, planned about the timing. So it will be around the afternoon. Uh, for those of you in Asia, it will be around 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., I guess. Uh, yeah, so you can expect two videos from me every Monday. And uh, I was also doing Check MK series uh, every Tuesday. I only did like eight videos and I kind of lost interest uh, in it. Um, but I'm going to resume that uh, in the future. But it's not going to be regular every Tuesday, right? So whenever I get some time, I record the video and I upload it uh, on Tuesdays. So there are a few more videos to cover in CheckMK. And uh, this one, Kubernetes, and we've got MongoDB series starting from this Monday. Uh, but uh, if you look at my uh, uh, status bar and date timestamp, don't worry about the different uh, date or time because that's the time I record the video. But these are supposed to be released every Monday, right? So. Whenever I say, welcome to Monday Mongo, don't get annoyed uh, because I'm releasing it on Monday, but I'm recording it on a different date. Okay, so, um, and the other series I was doing was on Elastic Stack. And again, I've done uh, like seven or eight videos in Elastic Stack. This is not going to be regular. Whenever I learn some new topic, um, I record it, but the release date uh, will be on Thursdays. So if I have a video that I've recorded, it will be released on Thursday whatever is related to Elastic Stack. Okay, so um, again, welcome to this new series of Monday Mongo. We will be covering a lot of topics uh, around the MongoDB uh, database. And uh, as usual, I've got some notes for this uh, introduction. So this one, uh, the first of this uh, video series is going to be introduction to MongoDB, uh, what topics I'll be covering and so on. Okay, let me bring up my notes here. Okay, so why am I doing this MongoDB um, tutorial? So, so far I've been used to uh, the RDB, RDBMS, Relational Database Management System, and predominantly MySQL. Okay, so uh, MongoDB is a NoSQL. Uh, you can assume it as not SQL. Actually, it's, a not, it's not only SQL, it's more than that. So that's NO, NoSQL, not only SQL. So how it differs from the traditional relational database uh, management system. So why do we need uh, NoSQL and what are the different uh, available NoSQL databases? There are tons of uh, NoSQL databases, uh, but I'll show you a quick example of what uh, uh, the famous ones are, most <laughs> well-known ones are. Okay, so in relational database, what you will normally do is you will record uh, your data in a table format. So you've got your database, uh, you've got your table, and you insert rows into your table. Whereas in NoSQL, we don't have that uh, structure. So the, another thing is RDBMS is structured and NoSQL is non-structured. So it's kind of dynamic, right? Okay, so database, you create tables, you create records. Uh, that's the RDBMS. But in NoSQL, it's uh, document-based storage. So everything is stored in a uh, either as a key value pair or as a, or as a JSON, JavaScript object notation, JSON format. So this is just an introduction, but when I uh, go ahead and uh, record the other videos, and when you watch those videos, you'll come to know what I exactly mean by saying it's document-based uh, uh, database. Okay. <laughs> In, R in RDBMS, you are well known about, uh, you are aware about the table concept, the rows, records, columns, and so on. So what is its equivalent in NoSQL? Uh, a table in a NoSQL is called a collection, and rows, individual records in RDBMS, is uh, equivalent to documents within the collection. So you've got uh, a document, and you can have multiple documents that are grouped together in a collection. 
like how you put all the records in a table. So you uh, collect all the documents in a collection. It's structured, non-structured for RDBMS. You've got the columns, individual columns, and in NoSQL, it's called the individual fields. So some of the merits, it's dynamic schema, which means it's, it's basically schema-less. There is no schema in NoSQL. Uh, to explain that, uh, consider an example of a table where you've got uh, a name, um, address of a person, a simple table. Just imagine a simple table with name, uh, address, phone number. Just three columns, name, uh, age, maybe name, age, and phone number. Okay, so you've got thousands of records. Um, if you want to add, so for example, uh, there are a thousand people, thousand records you enter in the table. And uh, for a few of the uh, uh, persons, they've got multiple phone numbers. So you have to add phone number one and phone number two. So what you will do is normally you will add additional columns to your table, right? <coughs> so before designing your database, before designing your table, you need to create a schema, which is how your table should look like. So, okay, so I've got name, I've got age, I've got phone number one, phone number two, phone number three as the column. So that needs to be decided before you're creating the table. We need to know the structure clearly. And if you add more uses, more records to the table that needs more columns, then uh, you will have to keep on altering the table uh, whenever you need new columns, right? And all the individual records won't be similar. So some people will have one phone number, some people will have two phone numbers, some people will have five phone numbers if they are crazy. And consider there are a thousand records and it's just one record where you have a person with five phone numbers. Just to hold that record, your entire table needs to have those fields, name, age, phone number one through to phone number five. <coughs> so all the other records, 999 uh, entries uh, have just one phone number and this one record has five phone numbers. Just to accommodate that record, your entire table structure has to be changed and also <coughs> so on, right? Whereas in NoSQL, Every individual record can be different, can be dynamic. It can include name, it can include age, it can include any number of phone numbers. You don't have to predefine any type of schema. It's a JSON format. You just keep adding uh, the uh, entries. There's no fixed fields. Every single document is different. So that's basically dynamic schema, schema-less. It's, it's used in big data <coughs> analysis and so on. So when I come to show you actual example in the coming videos, then you will uh, gain a good understanding of it. Why, what I mean by saying uh, a schema less or a dynamic uh, records, dynamic documents. Um, faster data access, it's quick to access the data and easy to scale out. We will uh, look at the uh, replication and sharding, how you can set up a highly available um, MongoDB server and how to shard data Sharding is nothing but uh, <coughs> writing the data different replica sets, which we will come to. That's an, not an adv I wouldn't say advanced topic, but uh, once we go through the basics of the uh, uh, the NoSQL, we can finally look at the replication and the sharding of data. It's writing data to different replica set um, for easy uh, scaling out. So in case if you want to uh, scale out, if you want to add more replica set, if you are processing a very huge amount of data, you can add more shards, more replica sets, and you can shard the data. It will give you a good performance, read performance, so you don't have to read the entire data. For example, you've got uh, tons of data, millions of uh, documents uh, in one MongoDB instance versus multiple replica set uh, with sharding enabled. So the read perf performance is going to be very good if you've got that sharding enabled. And that's a whole separate topic which we will cover in the later video. It's document based storage. It has got a rich query language similar to SQL. You can do all powerful queries. Um, you don't have to worry about the joins. If you are used to MySQL or any relational database management system, you would have done lots of joins, inner join, outer join, left join, and all sorts of things. So uh, it's not a join in NoSQL. It's called embedded documents. We can do all sorts of things. We can do rich queries and everything. So that's what we will be exploring in the in the coming weeks. So those are some of the merits. Some of the other examples of uh, NoSQL databases. So we've covered MongoDB, there is CouchDB, 
Amazon's DynamoDB is also a NoSQL database. Uh, we've got Cassandra, RavenDB, and there are lots and lots of these. Um, these are just to show you that, to get an idea of what other databases that exist that are NoSQL. Okay, so the topics that I have planned to cover is uh, the first, I mean the next video in this series, the second video after this introduction video is going to be the, the installation part. So that's where we are going to start, how to install um, MongoDB server on your machine. Uh, you can install it directly on your hardware on a machine or you can use Docker containers. I usually prefer Docker containers. Um, it's portable. If you want, you can move it between multiple machines. Uh, I don't know who's using uh, the direct installation nowadays, so every, everything is containerized for portability. Um, so, but, but anyway, I'll show you on different platforms, Arch Linux, Ubuntu, CentOS, how to install it and how to run MongoDB as a Docker container with persistent storage and so on. And then another topic would be uh, managing the database, how to create manage, how to create a database, how to use it, um, how to delete them, how to switch between multiple databases, uh, manage collections. Collections are nothing but tables. So how do you create a collection, um, how to uh, delete a collection, how to add documents and so on. And the next topic would be how to manage the documents, which means how to insert data into your table, which means how to insert a document into your collection. So that's the basic CRUD principle, if you are familiar with it. Uh, create, read, update, and delete. So basically, we'll be, uh, I'll be showing you how to create a new document, how to read, how to use query uh, to read the document, how to update it, how to delete uh, a document, how to delete multiple documents, and so on. These are all very, very beginner level uh, concepts just want to go through because you must you might be familiar with uh, the normal SQL uh, databases like MySQL Oracle and everything so you know how to create a database how to create a table how to insert uh, a primary key and how to do all those queries and so on so the syntax is going to be slightly different that's why I wanted to go through all these basic concepts first and then we can look at how to uh, back up and restore your uh, MongoDB whether it's a single instance or it's a replica set and uh, how about setting a replication uh, with a primary and secondary how uh, the uh, uh, sync happens between the uh, members of the replica set and so on and then finally uh, sharding uh, and then rock mongo if you are used to php uh, my admin using php to access your mysql databases it's similar to that it's a gui administration tool rock mongo so you can access your uh, mongodb you can run commands you can create databases uh, collections documents um i i don't know i haven't tried it it might be like the mysql workbench if you have used that uh, connecting to a mongodb instance and doing administrative work on that so those are the initial topics that i have got in my mind uh, so it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a couple more videos, around nine to ten videos to start with. And as I go through this tutorial, uh, as I go through this video series, uh, from my previous experience, I know uh, from the comments that I'm receiving from the users, uh, I will go with additional topics. Uh, they might come back and say, this is not working, and uh, why don't you try that way? So based on your comments, I'll be following up this series with uh, additional videos and um, I could also do a video on how to uh, integrate Python with MongoDB, how, how to use Python script uh, to interact with a MongoDB database using PyMongo module, something like that. Yeah, once we cover the, uh, the basic fundamental uh, things that are required, then we can go ahead and explore uh, further topics around MongoDB. Okay, so that's the uh, first of this video series, Mo um, Monday Mongo. And um, yeah, I'll see you all in my uh, next video, which will be about the uh, installation. All right, and if you've got any ideas or any topics around MongoDB, or if you are an experienced MongoDB user watching uh, this video series, just let me know if I'm doing something wrong. Correct me if I did something wrong because I'm also learning MongoDB with you. I haven't used MongoDB before. So I'm going to be looking forward to you uh, in the comments uh, if I'm doing something wrong or you're going to help me out.
right okay thank you so much for your time watching this video today i will see you in another episode of monday mongo bye bye